Hi everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs, and in this video I'm going to show you how to fix a carburetor that's gotten clogged with old gasoline. It's a very common problem with carburetors, especially in things like lawn mowers and snow blowers and any other yard implement, like a generator. You don't use a generator all that often, so it has some gasoline in it, and the next thing you know when you try to fire it up again it won't run because the gasoline, the old gasoline, has clogged the passageways in the carburetor. Now I've done this repair that I'm going to show in this video. I've done it on Kohler and Honda and PowerSmart motors. I've uh, also done it on the one I'm going to be showing you in this video, which is a Subaru Robin engine. So that's the carburetor I'm going to be showing you, and it's the same technique for all of these carburetors. It's probably the same for Briggs & Stratton and many others. Basically, you take a wire, and I'll be demonstrating it in the video, and you use it to unclog the ports, and you use some carburetor cleaner to wash things clean. So uh, this actually, what I'm going to show you, is the video that was in the middle of a longer video that I shot about how to fix a Coleman PowerMate generator. This was the carburetor part of that much longer video, and I figured that many of you out there are going to want to see just the carburetor part. So with that in mind, here we go. Here is how you fix a clogged carburetor. Now that the carburetor's off, I've set up a little makeshift workbench because I'm going to disassemble the carburetor, and I'm going to use a piece of stiff steel wire to shove into tiny little holes and tubing and orifices within the carburetor to clean them out. Now, almost certainly there's some varnish that's gunked up some of those and is going to cause the carburetor to not deliver fuel correctly. So let's get started on that. I'm going to use this uh, workmate kind of workbench here to be able to clamp this in so that I can better get bolts and screws out. So let's get started with doing this. This is the carburetor. It's mostly upside down. This is the float bowl right here. This is a little bowl which is usually filled with gasoline and inside of it is something called a float. And it's a seriously important component as far as a carburetor is concerned. But I'm mentioning all of this because this may actually have some gasoline in it. And I have it upside down. Hopefully the gasoline won't spill out on me when I undo this screw. This screw here will drain any gasoline, assuming I have it upside down from the way it now is. This bolt here actually attaches the float, the float bowl to the carburetor. Okay, so this is the drain screw. So I took the drain screw off the float and I tipped it upside down and there was some really brown gasoline in there. So it's old gasoline, I'm sure it is just filled with varnish and just ready to clog the uh, orifices and, and uh, passageways inside the carburetor. So I'm going to now take the bolt off that holds the uh, float bowl and we'll be, then see the float bowl and clean it out. Okay, let's take this bolt off. And this will hold the float bowl on. I'm going to loosen this. Let's see what happens when I tip it upside down and see if there's any remaining fuel in it. Now gasoline will dissolve some plastics so that whenever you're dealing with gasoline you need to drain some gasoline. You should drain it into a metal or a glass container. So I've got a glass bowl underneath me here. Let's see what happens when I take this off. Okay, so it looks pretty brown in there. Not too bad. I've seen worse. This is the float right here. I'll be taking the float off and then we'll be cleaning some passages. I do see that there is a bit of gasoline in there, so I'm going to pour it out. Some very brown looking gasoline. The right way to clean a carburetor is with some carburetor and choke cleaning fluid. They sell this at every auto parts store. You can get it at Walmart and probably many other places. It's not terribly expensive, but it's the right stuff to help dissolve the varnish that's in these carburetors and flush it away. So the next step in the process for me is to disassemble a little bit more of the carburetor, and then I'm going to be flushing the components with this to clean that varnish away. I've got to drive the pin that's holding the float in place so that I can remove the float 
to better clean this. And usually these pins just slip out, but this one, that's all it took was a little tap and it drove out. To get the float off completely, we have to remove this screw. With that screw out of the way, you can now pull the float off. Hanging from it is this needle valve. Be sure that you don't lose that. That's an important part of the carburetor. Once you start cleaning the carburetor, it's good to be wearing goggles because the carburetor cleaner spray is going to be just going everywhere. So wear goggles and keep your mouth shut and that way you'll be happier. I also need to clean the float bowl. Look at that brown stuff coming out of there. And I'll scrub it a bit with a toothbrush to loosen up any gunk. I recommend that you do not use your wife's toothbrush for this. And I'm going to get some cleaner on the needle valve. Just to get it clean too. Finally, the float. Okay, so the time has come to take the steel wire and run it into any orifices in this every one you can find. So this is the pipe that brings gasoline into the carburetor. I'm going to start with that and just run it in and out. Every now and then when you do one of these jobs, all of a sudden you'll feel it break free and that's when you knew that there was a blockage there and you've now cleared that blockage. So just run it in and out and try to get anything freed up. Sometimes I don't know if these are, are uh, orifices that actually do anything or not. Down in the float. This is the port where the needle valve goes, so you know that there's a, a tiny little passageway in there. And just run the wire in and out of these until you're sure that there's nothing in there that's causing it to jam up. Now copper wire might do the trick. This is steel wire, which is what I recommend. You might be able to use a small paper clip. Now that seemed to stop me at first and then the wire went further in. This wire, I think, was for a picture hanger wire. Well, the carburetor is now all apart and it has been cleaned. So now it is time to put all the parts back together and see if we can get Humpty Dumpty all to fit together nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the needle valve and put it on the float. Slide the float down over where it goes. There's the pin for the float, so we need to get the pin back in. Okay. 
There we go. Might need to be tapped in a little bit. The screw is the next thing to go in and I just reamed a, a steel wire through it to make sure that it was clear. So now I'm going to screw this in here. Finally, for the carburetor anyway, the float bowl goes on and the bolt goes in that holds it in place. Snug it down. And the drain screw goes in its hole. Well, as you could see in that video, it's not a really difficult task, but it is a little tricky. You got to be careful. You don't want to lose anything and you want to make sure that all of the grit and dirt and junk that's in the carburetor gets washed away and when you reinstall it, it's a nice clean carburetor. Every time I've done this, every time, including the very first time when I didn't know what I was doing, every time I've done it, it's made the whatever the device was run again perfectly. So uh, obviously this will work if you follow the steps that I show you in this video. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.